In this presentation we begin by introducing a set of parameters that have been previously prepared in a comma-separated values file, or CSV. This is simply a matter of importing this file into Fusion 360. A quick preview allows us to check these parameters. Module, addendum, detendum, pressure angle, minimum number of teeth before shift, etc. The purpose of this talk is to model a parameterized pair of meshing gear wheels starting from scratch using Fusion 360. You will find on my channel another talk in which a parameterized wheel was already presented. At that time I had taken some time to briefly show the parameters. The same parameters are used here. They have been duplicated since we are going to model two distinct wheels. We will apply ourselves when drawing the sketches so that these wheels correctly mesh with each other from the start. Some parameters have been added to manage a profile shift, which will be necessary for pinions with a low number of teeth. So we start by sketching the first wheel. The process is similar to the one in the other talk. Special care is taken in drawing the gear tooth profile, which is the beginning of the curve of a circle involute. Remember that. The blue line visible on the left of the sketch is a radius of the base circle. It is part of the tooth profile. The circle involute starts at its end. The construction line being drawn right now is a radius of the tip circle. The circle involute, and thus the tooth profile, ends at its end. We're now plotting a pitch circle radius. Its angular distance from the base circle radius depends only on the pressure angle. The value of this angular distance is tangent alpha minus alpha. Alpha is the pressure angle in the parameters. Tangent alpha value has been named theta in the parameters. This persistent D53 dimension value display in the middle of the screen is unpleasant. Fusion 360 is a good product but it is not without its sometimes annoying imperfections. This is an arc on the tip circle. This is a circle to model the hole in the center of the wheel. This is the root circle. Some display adjustments. No comment. A cup of coffee? This first sketch is almost finished. All that remains is to sample a few points on the circle involute. We draw four of them between the base circle and the primitive circle, and seven between the primitive circle and the tip circle. The route is quite repetitive and long, but presents no difficulty. However, we take care to be careful and methodical, the accuracy of the gear tooth profile depends on it. The presentation is accelerated here. There is no point in dwelling too much on it, especially since we still have the sketch of the second gear wheel to be done in a similar way to this one. Here are the four sampled points between the base circle and the pitch circle. Seven radii equidistant from the base circle. Seven tangents from the equidistant radii we have just traced.
and here are the seven points sampled between the primitive circle and the tip circle. We complete the sketch by interpolating the sampled points by plotting a spline. The sketch of the first gear wheel is now completed and locked. The sketch of the second gear wheel is similar to the first one. A copy paste of the first sketch does not seem opportune since the parameters used to assign the dimensions to the lines, arcs and angles are specific to each of the wheels. It is true that I have not tried and could try a copy paste and then apply the corresponding dimensions. This would save some time. Here we choose to repeat the exercise by redrawing all the needed lines. The presentation here is shown in accelerated form so as not to bore you too much. I understand that it can be so perific. If you wish, skip to 834. As a reminder, the spur gear script provided by Fusion 360 is very limited for modeling gears. It doesn't handle center distances, it doesn't handle tooth profile shifts, it doesn't handle meshing, it doesn't allow parameterization. In short, it is incomplete. We are trying here to fill many of these gaps. A cup of coffee? Or maybe a cup of tea? I got a better idea. Musica maestro. Finally, both sketches are ready. We visualize them here side by side, the discs of the two gear wheels already giving us an idea of the result. Let's change a parameter, the number of teeth of the second wheel for example. All this seems promising, the sketches adapt accordingly without any worries. At the intersection of the two sketches we can see the two tooth halves of each wheel in the right position for meshing without further adjustment. It might be time to save our work, don't you think? Let's begin with the first wheel, on the left. A solid body is generated by a simple extrusion of the root circle followed by the extrusion of a half tooth. The two extrusions are joined to form a single body. Then we duplicate the half tooth symmetrically. Actually it is the last feature performed that is symmetrically duplicated, I mean the extrusion, and not the body forming the half tooth. We continue with a fillet at the root of each tooth side. We complete the first wheel by applying a circular pattern of the last three features, which are the extrusion of the tooth half, 
its mirroring, and the fillet at the tooth root. The circular pattern is applied as many times as the desired number of teeth, which is parameter Z1. And here is a first gear modeled parametrically. The second gear is now made following exactly the same steps as the first one but starting from its corresponding sketch. Observe how this second wheel takes shape in the correct position in relation to the first visible wheel. This second wheel is finalized by circular pattern of the last three features, as for the first wheel. Year ha! There you go. Here we go. We got it. Hide the sketches, add a little color to distinguish the two gear wheels in position and observe the result. Here we are at the key moment. How does our gear behave when changing parameters? Let's change the number of teeth of the first gear from 19 to 17, immediate remodeling. Let's change the number of teeth of the second gear from 23 to 19, immediate remodeling. It's beautiful, it's magnificent, the teeth always mesh perfectly. Ever stronger, the first wheel is changed from 17 to as little as 8 teeth. At this low number of teeth a positive profile shift is necessary. We have provided it automatically in the parameters. Thus, when the pressure angle is 20 degrees, the profile shift is active for pinions with less than 17 teeth. Because of the profile shift a small gap or backlash has appeared between the two wheels. This is expected, it is a side effect of the shift. We will discuss about this in another talk. Thanks for watching.